Each artist you know has a mind that's polluted with voices that tell them their work is all useless, a chorus inside them that thrives on defeat. But it wouldn't stop one man, a man they call. And he read what he wrote, although most of it stunk. It was turgid at best. Every word as it left would just twirl in the air like a turd in a dress. And you'd think that with Keith, that voice that's inside him would have beefed up somewhat. A critical Viking. That wasn't the case, though. See, Keith wasn't frightened. He weren't a great writer. He just really liked writing. So each month in the bar with the mic in the corner, they'd slump as he started reciting this torture, dishing out words like a toilet that's blocked, the images crappy, the rhymes badly forced, and although they all dread it every week, he still read it, pulling metaphors like teeth without any anaesthetic. It was painful, all right. And while his work offered no joy, it did worse than that. It wound up. The old boys. You see, Keith was well known, and his name was like venom to the old boys who moaned that he just didn't get it. What is he doing? Where is the elegance? Why bother trying? It seems hardly Tennyson. This well trod routine had gone on for ages. But one evening, Keith brought out a handful of pages and he started to read, and the room became flat. Because even for Keith, what Keith read was quite bad. And the old boys all stared. They watched on in silence. It was bad, really bad. Something grew up inside them. They started to shake as though channeling demons. It's just rhymes, shuddered one. Dear God, there's no reason. That night, they sat down, dissected the problem. Keith's work was so bad they had to do something, but what? I mean, what? Nothing's stopping this guy. You can't put him off just by rolling your eyes or refusing to clap at the end of recital. It would take more resolve. It would take something final. So they agreed to a plan in the depths of their cloister. There was only one option. That option was Moida. At the next open mic, Keith started reciting. The old boys were armed, huge bags stacked behind them. He started his piece, and as he hit his stride, their arms darted down, clasped round what's inside, and in seconds they set to removing his grin. Each tomato they threw still held deep in the tin. It was a shocking amount to take on the chin, on the shoulder, the temple, the teeth. As the cans hammered hard, he collapsed in a heap, and the old boys all cheered with each thud on his flesh, and the cans they piled up until poor Keith was dead. The following day, they stood at his funeral. One read a piece, it was really quite beautiful, and there in the light it seemed right all this judgment. Who best to shield words than those longest incumbent? They pull out the weeds, stop new ones from growing, yes! Poetry's a standard in need of upholding. So each month they held cans throughout everyone's work and they pelted each poet whose poems were worst. And with those going on facing death on the mic, 20 poets became 12, became eight, became five. And the numbers soon dwindling, no newbies to bludgeon. The old boys in time had to turn on each other. One night, one of them messed up a stanza before he could argue they threw home the cans. And another one evening, as he went to his kitchen, was greeted with James. Your work has been slipping. And another one dead. The pages stayed red. Now every fudge line meant a can to the head until finally one day there was just one poet left. And the standard was high. <laughs>
from start through to finish, though the open mic lasted just a handful of minutes. But he didn't feel bad, no weight of the murder, blood in his hands. He thought, I'll go a stage further. Why give up on this mighty work we've begun? Why have all of my poems? Because you only need one. Yes, one single poem. Surely that is the answer. No way that anything could lower that standard. And he laughed to himself as he knew that he meant it. That night burned his pieces. The purge was intensive. And standing in front of a mirror quite pensive, he brained himself hard till his head was indented. And that was that. Poetry was safe and removed from all failings and lofty and great and lonely and empty and lacking in meaning removed from us sinners just a rock on the ceiling and I wonder sometimes if that's what we're craving when I see and hear artists obsessed with their slating because hating each other seems dumb and I'm guessing we'd stop if we saw down the route that we're heading I say here's to each artist who's mucked up a piece who messes work up and still doesn't retreat. If you ask me if we're craving more Tennyson's and Keats, it's just as important to cheer on the Keats. <laughs>